Estimates suggest that the 2016 Rio Summer Olympic Games had a total cost of $20 billion. This was far beyond the International Olympic Committee's initial estimate of $2.8 billion. So the question is, why did it go so far over budget? Well, it's mainly because the city of Rio had to pay for new subway lines, a renovated shipping port, an environmental cleanup, and a modern doping testing lab. Unfortunately, for the residents of Rio, shortly after the Olympic Games, a number of formerly impressive venues fell into disrepair. The dilapidated sites are a reminder of the failed promise of the Olympic Games. The Rio Olympics generated a net loss for the city, but the exact number is unclear. Some estimates put it at more than $11 billion. To add insult to injury, there's also been long-standing economic effects of vacant buildings and infrastructure that's deteriorating. Both of which, by the way, have been impacted by piling debts and maintenance costs. Now, the failure of the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio can be attributed to a mixture of poor governance, corruption, and the IOC being extremely short-sighted with the selection of an Olympic Games host. Unfortunately for the IOC, the following Summer Olympics in Tokyo suffered a similar fate. Tokyo initially budgeted $7 billion to host the 2020 Olympics. This was before increasing the budget to $15 billion. The actual cost, however, was far greater than the initial estimate, coming in at roughly $28 billion. That was in part because the city had to invest heavily in infrastructure, much of which had dubious long-term utility. Building new venues cost an estimated $3 billion. The most expensive venue was the 68,000-seater National Stadium which cost Tokyo $1.4 billion and sat empty for the duration of the Games. Going forward, this will incur a reported $22 million in annual maintenance fees. The city of Tokyo incurred further costs as the Olympics was delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The one-year delay is reported to have cost Tokyo $2.8 billion. Now, while the long-standing infrastructural issues which plagued Rio have not impacted Tokyo in exactly the same way, the 2021 Olympics failed to generate sufficient income to justify hosting the event. The reality is that Tokyo residents paid a hefty price for an event which returned very little in terms of long-term value. Historically, the Summer Olympic Games have resulted in losses for host cities. This is nothing new. In fact, going back to the 1960s, we can see that all Summer Olympic Games have gone over budget. So we need to ask ourselves, what does this actually mean for the upcoming Olympics in Paris? Well, the Paris Olympics is a slightly different beast, and here's why. On September 13th, 2017, the city of Paris was selected as the host of the 2024 Summer Olympics. Because of the pushback for the way cities previously went about hosting the Olympics, the IOC decided to select a city which already had, in large part, existing infrastructure. Now, this would of course mean that costs associated with developing new stadia, facilities and housing would be kept to a minimum. In addition, this would also mean that the IOC would be sticking to its mantra of putting on a more sustainable Olympics. A sustainable Olympics is one that utilizes infrastructure that a city already has in place without the need to build. Of course, not every city is going to be Olympics ready without any development whatsoever. And as we can see with the Paris Olympics, while the city is utilizing existing infrastructure, it's also building temporary facilities where required. In fact, only three new facilities will be built for the 2024 Olympics, an arena for gymnastics, an aquatic center, and the athlete's village. The cost of all of this to the French taxpayer is about $2 billion. But we really need to ask ourselves whether the Olympic Games will return the same amount of value to Parisians longer term. Unfortunately, this remains to be seen. For real value to be realized, the Paris Olympics must stay on budget. And unlike in Rio and Tokyo, there can't be legacy issues with newly built infrastructure. It's imperative that the city find uses for newly built facilities and that temporary structures are just that, temporary. As mentioned previously, with additional builds, a new athlete village and other associated costs, the burden to the taxpayer has been estimated at $2 billion. However, we shall see if this is actually the case in the near future. From the perspective of the IOC, they'll make money regardless, and this is because of the income they'll generate from broadcasting, partnerships, top partnerships, 
and ticketing. While the IOC reap a lot of the upside from having an Olympics, most of the costs associated with hosting are pushed to the host city. Sounds like a magnificent business model to me. But hosts are beginning to ask themselves whether the juice is actually worth the squeeze. And as such, the IOC is finding it increasingly difficult to attract cities to bid for future games. Which begs the question, why even host the Olympics? Countries choose to host the Olympics for various reasons, including the opportunity to showcase their culture, history and infrastructure on a global stage. Hosting the Olympics can boost tourism, stimulate economic growth and enhance a country's international prestige and soft power. Additionally, hosting the Games can lead to long-term benefits such as improved transportation systems, upgraded sports facilities and increased investment in urban regeneration projects. For many nations, hosting the Olympics is seen as a chance to foster national pride and leave a lasting legacy for future generations. But after seeing what happened in Rio and Tokyo, one has to wonder whether this is really the case or simply good old hyperbole. But in defense of those who argue in favor of hosting the Olympics, the redevelopment of the Olympic Park in London is a positive case study of how things should be done. Stratford in London has benefited from the infrastructure that the Olympics brought. Many economists, however, argue that hosting the Olympics does very little to benefit a city. In fact, in many cases, it's looked at as a burden to those who reside in a city and not a very effective way of stimulating growth for a local economy. So given how expensive hosting an Olympics can be, what are some reasonable alternatives? Well, there are three main ways the Olympics can be profitable for host cities. The first, most obvious one is that the IOC can take less of the profits and distribute revenues equitably with host cities. This, I'm sure, will not be agreeable to the IOC, but it's just a thought. Secondly, another reasonable alternative could be to hold the summer tournament in a region that already has the infrastructure in place. Somewhere like London, Athens, Paris and or Los Angeles, although the public transport in LA leaves a lot to be admired. The third alternative is to have one city be a permanent host of the Games. This to many is a radical alternative, but it seems pretty reasonable to me. In any case, please let me know what you think about cities going broke to host the Olympics down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.